Hello and welcome to Alexpo and today we're talking about the Euros. Euro 2020 should have been reaching its conclusion this weekend, but because of the whole global health crisis, it's been postponed until next summer. Where weirdly it'll still be called Euro 2020 rather than Euro 2021, but whatever, it's not important. On Football Manager 2020, the coronavirus isn't a thing, meaning Euro 2020 went off without a hitch, so today we're going to simulate the tournament and see which nation went all the way to the final and lifted the prestigious trophy that everyone wants to win, except for the World Cup of course. Since the simulation kicks off in June 2019, the teams qualifying aren't set in stone, so we've got a few differences to the actual teams that officially qualified. We'll run through them now. Wales and Russia didn't manage to qualify for the finals after getting knocked out in the playoffs, even though in reality both teams are already confirmed for the tournament. So at least that means Gareth Bale gets another summer off playing golf. Yes, I'm going to do that joke to death. And the Russians can get on with whatever it is the Russians do. Probably best not to ask. So who took their place? Well rejoice Tartan Army, as you're going to the Euros. Bring your iron brew, bring your haggis, bring your battered Mars bars and various other stereotypes because the squads qualified via the groups meaning they didn't face an awful playoff like in reality and they were also joined by Israel and Iceland. But at the playoffs now and the four teams that qualified were Serbia, North Macedonia, Turkey and Austria with the latter two qualifying via the groups in reality. So those are the teams, now let's get on in the groups and see what happened. Of course, since it was a slightly different tournament, that meant the group draw wasn't quite the same as in reality, but whatever, we'll just have to go with it. Right, as always, we'll kick things off with Group A. It consisted of Italy, Austria, Finland and Iceland. Italy obviously outright favourites for it, and they absolutely walked it. They kicked off the tournament on Friday the 12th of June with a 1-0 win over Finland. Federico Chiesa getting the win in the 38th minute. The day after, Iceland drew with Austria. And then it was the Battle of the Minnows, Finland against Iceland, and it was Finland who came out, out on top, with Timo Pukki getting the winner, giving his country their first ever win at a tournament. I mean, this is the first time they've actually competed at a tournament. That win was enough to put Finland through as the third best team with three points. Austria came second with four points. They got a win over Finland and the drew with Iceland. But Italy absolutely romped home. Three wins, didn't concede a goal. Belotti got two against Austria, then the final day they beat Iceland 1-0 Lorenzo Insigne. So Italy go through as group winners, Austria second and Finland and it was Iceland who were knocked out. On to Group B, France and Portugal should have been in the group of death alongside Germany in reality. But I mean this is still probably the hardest group of the tournament. France, Portugal, Turkey and Denmark. Denmark always capable, they've well organised, got players like Eriksson, Schmeichel. And Turkey have got a growing generation, they've got Cengiz under, Soyuncu, so this was a pretty tricky group. And world champions France came out on top, only just though, beating Portugal on the head-to-head -head record because of that win there against them, 1-0, and Anthony Martial. He did the same on the opening day, beat Turkey 1-0, second minute goal for Martial. Portugal beat Denmark, Bruno Fernandes and Florentino Luis. This was the deciding game here, Turkey 3, Denmark 1. Meaning Turkey went through as one of the best third place teams with three points just because of that head to head rec record. Because who beat did Denmark? I Denmark beat France. Lasse Schoen, that is pretty, pretty harsh on Denmark. They've beaten France, yet they've still come bottom of the group. I mean, France are the world champions. But there we have it France and Portugal and Turkey progress on Group C. This is another tough group as well Belgium, Holland, Serbia, and Ukraine. No surprises, Belgium coming top, but Holland only just scraped through. Belgium won all three of their games, bat Ukraine to start things off, De Bruyne, Tielemans and Lukaku. Then they got a narrow 1-0 win against Serbia, Christ Lukaku scoring in the first minute. And then after that on the final day, they beat Holland 2-1, Lukaku and De Bruyne at it again. Pretty easy for, for the Belgians. But Holland, yeah, only just getting through the start of the group with a 0-0 draw against Serbia. And then they just got past Ukraine 1-0, that was enough to put them on 4 points and through to the next round. Serbia and Ukraine out. Serbia didn't get enough points to go through as one of the best third place teams. On Group D, which I believe is England, and yes, England top of the group. The three lines are going all of the way. Scotland as well. That's amazing from Scotland to get through. I mean, no surprises Israel coming bottom of the group, but Croatia to come third, not win a single game. The first game of the group was the big one, England and Scotland, and it was Gareth Southgate's men that got through. Rashford, Sterling and Tammy Abraham with the goals. But Croatia got off to a bad start drawing with Israel. That was probably the, the beginning of the end for them. They couldn't beat Israel, they weren't going to get through. And then they lost to Scotland, Ryan Fraser and Carlin Grant. And, and then they drew with England 2-2. Scotland were excellent though. Carlin Grant, three goals in the group stages. So they went through with six points. England topped it with seven. They 
beat Israel in their second game 2-0. Goals from James Madison and Marcus Rashford. And as we mentioned before, the 2-2 draw with Croatia. But yes, England and Scotland progress. I mean, that's incredible for Scotland. They're lucky to be there. Never mind, just get to the knockout stages. In Group E, Spain, Switzerland, Sweden and the Czech Republic. Again, no surprises. Switzerland, not Switzerland. Spain topped the group. On to Group E, Spain, Switzerland, Sweden, the Czech Republic, no surprises. Spain coming out on top, winning all three games. They batted Switzerland on the opening day, Alvaro Morata with a brace. And then they beat Sweden, Morata again on the score sheet. And then they beat the Czech Republic, and yet again, Alvaro Morata on the score sheet. What's going on with Alvaro Morata on this game? What does he know that we don't? Switzerland took second space with uh, four points, and Sweden's win against the Czech Republic. Was it against the Czech Republic? Yep, it was against the Czech Republic, there it was. Pontus Janssen with an 88th minute winner. That's enough to put them through as one of the third best. As one of the best. Uh, Christ, this is such a tongue twister. One of the best third place teams. I hate this rule. Why can't they just have an odd, an even number? To, ah! They move on to Group F. You get the gist. Germany, Poland, North Macedonia and Hungary. And amazingly, North Macedonia have qualified. Let's have a quick look at North Macedonia and see who they've got. Absolutely no one. Alioski. Yeah. Fair play to them, they got through with one win. Germany topped the group three wins out of three. Again, it's that mishmash of German teams because for some reason, foot managers don't have the license and so. Hopefully they don't go all the way and win it. Poland came second with two wins. Obviously the only game they lost was against the Germans. And North Macedonia, a 3-0 win against Hungary, putting them through in third place. Isn't that incredible? Right, into the knockout round. First game with a massive tie, Holland and Italy. Italy coasted through the group, didn't concede a goal, but they conceded two to the Dutch, and it was the Netherlands that advanced. Memphis Depay and Jeannie Wijnaldum put the Dutch in at the quarterfinals. Big blow for Italy, because I mean, they're on the brink of a golden generation. But yeah, the Netherlands getting back to what they were into the quarterfinals, and they are joined by Portugal, who beat Austria 1 0. Another first minute goal from Bruno Fernandes. What is it about this tournament and scoring in the first minute? No surprise there, Portugal easing past Austria. Next up, France needed extra time to beat Sweden. They went 1-0 down after, is it Alexander Isaac? Yep, Alexander Isaac put the Swedes ahead. Kylian Mbappe equalising the 84th minute and it was settled by Ousmane Dembele, nine minutes from penalties. The French are through. Can they do the double? We shall see. Belgium coasted past North Macedonia. No surprise that North Macedonia got knocked out. They're just, to be fair, just getting the tournament was an achievement in itself. Kevin De Bruyne and Lukaku, those two at it again. Unfortunately for the Scots, their journey ended in the second round. They were beaten by Switzerland in extra time, even though the sp oh, they've played against 10 men for most of the game. Harris Seferovic's goal settled it. Germany got past Finland 2-0, even though they went down to 10 men. And as you can see here, we'll, we'll come to the... The big talking point there about England in a minute, but Spain knocked out by Turkey. They went down to nine men after 18 minutes. Bush gets and Saul sent off. And then Cheng is under with a brace to put Turkey 2 0 up. Morata got one back. God, that is desperate for Spain. Down to nine men with 70 minutes to go. Not as bad as England, though. They were knocked out by Poland. Lewandowski's brace and Szymanski was enough to put the Poles through. England out in the second round. Considering they've got the semi-finals of the World Cup, a lot of people have thinking England are going to go far. Football's coming home and all that tripe. But alas, on Football Manager, it did not. Harry Kane and Jordan Henderson with the goals. But England are going home early. And on we go to the quarter-finals. And another shock, Switzerland have knocked out Germany. The Germans went ahead through some bloke called Justin Elshoff. Whoever he is, isn't real. Doesn't matter. But Ricardo Rodriguez got a penalty in the 87th minute. Went out of time. Switzerland did the job on penalties. And they are into the semi-finals. That is that is some story. Christ, that sounded really insincere. But anyway, on to the next one. Holland 4, France 2. The world champions have been knocked out at the quarterfinals. That is a massive, massive game. France versus Holland. You'd still think France would get through. I know the Dutch are getting better, but... But no, Memphis Depay with a brace, Virgil van Dijk got one, Iaterin, I think he's the easy out my lad, he got one as well. And Mbappe and Griezmann for the French, but it wasn't enough, 4-2 to the Dutch, and they're into the semis. Next in the quarterfinals, Belgium and Portugal, another big tie. Eden Hazard, Kevin De Bruyne putting the Belgians through, their goal, this is the last chance for their golden generation to really win it. And they're into the semis, and they've got a great chance. Final quarterfinal, Poland versus Turkey, I mean... 
the bookies would have thinking this was going to be England Spain, but it wasn't. It was the Poles, and they've beaten Turkey 2 0. Gregor Krakowiak and Arcadius Milik putting them through the semi final. So, I mean, this is a pretty, pretty wild tournament. Some massive names out as we head into the semi finals. And Switzerland have done it. They are into the final. It's that man again, Ricardo Rodriguez, beating the Dutch 1 0. Can they go all the way and win their first ever major tournament? Let's see who they'll face in the final, and it is Belgium. The Golden Generation have reached a major final. Obviously in the 2018 World Cup they were beaten by France in the semis, but this time Poland couldn't stop them. Lewandowski did his best. I say he did his best, it was 4-0 at the Belgium after 79, 75 minutes. So they're through Aiden Hazard, Thomas Munier and Lukaku, setting up a final between Belgium and Switzerland. And would you believe it, Switzerland, oh my god, what a final that is. Belgium went 1-0 up in the 4th minute through Aiden Hazard, and they were winning up until the 93rd minute, when Braille and Bolo netted an amazing equaliser, I imagine it was amazing. Goes to extra time, and Renato Stefan in the 113th minute wins it for the Swiss. I mean, he's just had an awful season for Wolfsburg, an average rating of 6.5, and he scored the winner at the Euros. Switzerland have won the Euros. Uh, you know what? That's probably about equivalent of Leicester winning the Premier League. I am shocked. Let's have a look at the stats. Robert Lewandowski wins the Golden Boot with six goals, just beating Morata and Lukaku. Szymanski joins Munier on four for the assists. Average rating, Harry Kane and Arzabal got an eight. That's not really accurate since they didn't play that many games. Robert Lewandowski, three man of the match awards. So I think that's got to be him, player of the tournament. But I mean, look at the past win. I mean, the Euros have had some mad past winners. Since Greece won it in 2004, Spain won it back to back when they do were just dominating world football. Then Portugal absolutely fluked it against France in 2016. And then the Swiss have won it. I mean, you think of all the great teams that were going to be at this Euros. Belgium's golden generation, England are looking good, Spain have got a great squad, Italy are coming back, Portugal have got some amazing players coming through. I mean, they can't really count Germany here because it's not quite the same. Scotland were there, Ollie McBurney got three assists. He's going to get loads of messages from that lass on Twitter. But despite all of that, Switzerland, bloody Switzerland, neutral Switzerland have won it. Top players, Renato Stafford named as the top player for Switzerland. I, of course, is. Give that man a stat, you. Granit Xhaka lifting the European Cup. I cannot believe it. We are going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, as always, don't forget to give it a like, share the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next time, we will see you around.